Four months ago, I created six starter Pokemon that I deemed missing starter Pokemon. Two months ago, I created their middle evolutions, and today, I'll be showing you their final forms. For the final time, a missing starter Pokemon, as I'm calling them, is a starter Pokemon of either the grass, fire, or water type that has not yet been created, but has other starter Pokemon like it already created for two of those types. That sounds confusing, I know, <laughs> but for example, we got a water type crocodile in Gen 2, that being Totodile, and a fire type crocodile in Gen 9, that being Foycoco. With this, we were missing a grass type crocodile starter, until I created Palili and five other missing starters. If you want to learn more about the criteria of these missing starters, go check out the original video. And if you want to go learn about the middle evolutions, you can check that one out too. But now, let's get into the six missing starters final evolutions. I started the first video with Pelili, so let's start the final video with Pelili. This is a grass type alligator Pokemon to go alongside Totodile and Fuecoco, as I already mentioned. Upon evolution, it becomes Patigator, the Patty Pokemon. And when Patigator reaches level 36, it will become Lotushen, the Irrigator Pokemon. That's a pun. L laugh. Lotushen is a grass and ground type with of course the ability Overgrow and a new signature hidden ability, Pure Lotus. Pure Lotus will act like Mimikyu's Disguise ability, allowing Lotushen to take one hit of damage for free. It's called this because Lotuses are known as the Flower of Purity, as they bloom from the mud but are completely free of it, which goes well with the ground type of this Pokemon. This ability will allow it to set up for a turn before hitting you with its massive attack stat. Lotushen is of course based on the Lotus Flower, and the lily pad from Palili has become a non-law, or rice farmer hat. The brown areas on its back and legs are made of wood and act as an armor. They also allow this Pokemon to swim through swamps without being noticed. Its tail is based on both a hoe and a pickaxe, as the ancient Chinese are known to be some of the first farmers to have tools like this. I'll touch more on the Shen part of its name later. The shiny form takes on the colors of its Prevos, being a more exaggerated color scheme of a real life Chinese alligator. With the lotus flowers becoming white to really emphasize that even though this Pokemon lives in swamps, they stay pure and do not get dirty. It's said that Lotus Shen and Patigator are the Pokemon that showed humans the way of agriculture in ancient times. Lotus Shen are often the creators of new farms, doing the plowing and dirty work. But one once that part's set up, it has Patigator do the routine tending to the crops, and Lotushen become the caretaker and bodyguard of the farm. I wanted to strike a balance between the fierce nature of crocodiles and alligators, and the gentle nature that grass types usually have, and I think the pink flowers do a good job at helping that. I hope all you original fans of Palili still like this line. Next up for this first starter trio is the evolution line of Bombelli, a fire type toad to go along with Bulbasaur and Froakie. Bombelli is of course based on a bomb and roundness in general. When it evolved into Tum Toad though, it lost its flame due to that roundness and is no longer confident in itself. However, at level 36, Tum Toad will evolve into Crocodile, the Bakudan Pokemon. Crocodile is the first fire and fairy type Pokemon. It has the ability Blaze and the new hidden ability Blast Resistant. This new ability will allow Crocodile to use moves like Explosion, Misty Explosion, and Self Destruct while only taking 25% of its max HP. Busted. I know. The Toad in this Pokemon comes mainly from the Fire Belly Toad, uh, along with Tum Toad and Bomb Belly. The croak part of Crocodile's name of course comes from the sound toads make, and I'll talk about the Udai part a little later. Another part of his name though comes from Bakudan, which means bomb in Japanese, going along with bomb belly again. Bakudan can also be used when describing food in Japanese though, like a flavor bomb, which goes with the whole idea of this line having big bellies. Crocodile spends its time enjoying meals wherever a good view might be. It's one of the happiest Pokemon you'll ever meet. It will share its food with any person or Pokemon that comes its way, even if they might be there to bring Crocodile harm. If a Crocodile uses its flames to cook your food, it will bring joy to you the moment it touches your lips. It is said that the more a person needs some joy in their life, the more sensitive they are to the yummy smell of a Crocodile cooking somewhere. Finally, the shiny form just follows the patterns of Bombelli and Tum Toad shinies, that being a blue and yellow color scheme. I hope that you Bombelli lovers enjoy the story that this evolution line tells. Last but not least, the water type of this first trio, Bubbly, was originally made to be the water type cat to go alongside Litten and Sprigatito, based on Bubbles and the Dragon Lee house cat breed. 
Bubbly float above the ocean on their bubbles. It then evolved into Bubbline, becoming a moody teen and migrating inland just a little bit to lakes and streams. At level 36 though, Bubbline embraced the ocean and become the mighty Drakoshi, a water and dragon type, and the first dragon type starter. It is known as the Guardian Pokemon. I know that a dragon type starter is something never seen before, but since the other two most OP types, Steel and Fairy, are held by starters, I think it's fair to have one be dragon type. Hopefully you guys got this hint by Bubbly being a Dragon Lee cat back in the first episode. Anyways though, Dracoshi's name comes from Draco, just meaning dragon to keep things simple, and the Osh part of Oshi sounds like ocean. I'll get into the she part here in a little bit. Dracoshi have the Torrent ability and a new hidden ability called Ocean's Pride. Ocean's Pride is essentially a buffed version of Swift Swim. In rainy weather, Drakoshi will receive a speed, attack, and special attack buff rather than just speed, so you can use its balanced stats to your advantage. Drakoshi patrol the ocean, defending the weak. If they are not patrolling though, they are standing guard over their families. When swimming, it can cause tsunamis simply from the mighty stroke of its tail. It can run on land almost just as fast as it can swim. It can even run on the water's surface. Drakoshi is very prideful. If anything threatens its peace, its mane will light up like a thunderstorm. It never backs down from a fight and never lets a foe escape. The shiny takes on a classic green dragon color scheme with the thunderstorm mane taking on a classic white cloud color. This is probably my ideal starter Pokemon, so I hope you guys like it as much as I do. You probably noticed how I didn't fully explain all these Pokemon's names, and I do have a reason for it. See, this starter trio would be from some kind of Chinese-based Pokemon region, and I wanted to incorporate a common theme between the three of them. So, I decided to give them all the theme of different Chinese myths, deities, and religion. Starting from the top, Lotus Shen takes inspiration from the divine farmer Shenong. Shenong is the patron deity of farmers, rice traders, and practitioners of Chinese medicine. In Chinese mythology, Shenong also taught humans to use a plow and irrigate, which are all things that Lotus Shen and its pre-evolutions are based on. Secondly, and something you guys might know more about, Crocodile takes heavy inspiration from Budai, or the Laughing Buddha. Budai is known as the ultimate symbol of happiness, generosity, and kind-heartedness, which are all things Crocodile is known for in the Pokemon world. Laughing Buddha is also derogatively known as the Fat Buddha, which of course involves the belly of Bombelli and tummy of Tumtoad, and the whole arc of this Pokemon line becoming a Jolly Toad in the end. Finally, Drakoshi is based on the Shishi or Chinese guardian lion, which typically stand as statues to protect Buddhist temples or other places of importance. Being dragon type, it's also based on the long, or Chinese dragon. I wanted to combine these two Chinese beasts because, well, because uh, I thought it would be sick. What do you think of this starter trio though? Which would you choose? Let me know in a comment and like and subscribe if you're enjoying your time here so far. But don't leave yet, we're only halfway done. We've got one more trio to go through, so here we go. Starting once again with the grass type, we've got Zora Leaf, which was meant to go alongside Cyndaquil and Oshawott. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but it makes sense if you watch the original video. Zora Leaf then evolved into Castripe, gaining the poison typing. And once you level up your Castripe to level 36, it will become Zoracilla. Zoracilla is a grass and poison type and is based on the Zorilla and the poison known as Ricin, which are both where the name comes from. Ricin can be found in castor plants, which is what the tail is meant to represent. The beans of the castor plant can be found inside of these spiky red balls, which are what Zoracilla used to attack. Zoracilla even learns a new signature move, Ricin Bomb, an 80 base power poison type physical move with 100% accuracy. Now this move doesn't sound that great, but that's before the secondary effect. See, Ricin Bomb has a 100% chance to poison the opponent and a 20% chance to splatter onto the next Pokemon in the opponent's party and poison them as well. Coupled with the merciless hidden ability, this starter would be dangerous. It would also be dangerous out in the wild, as it's known as the Assassin Pokemon. It lurks in the shadows and uses its poison to subdue enemies before they even know it's there. This Pokemon is super fast and strong, and I wanted to convey that in this Spider-Man-like pose. The shiny form takes on a black and white color scheme like real Zorillas, and the leafy tail gains autumn colors, and I think it looks great. I know a lot of people didn't like Zora Leaf at first, but I hope this final stage redeems it.
To match Squirtle and Turtwig, I created the Fire-type Tortoise, Kamelt, the Melt Shell Pokemon. It then evolved into Glacier, the Glass Shell Pokemon, as its shell became Libyan Glass. However, something was off, as it seems to be confused about something. I'll explain everything when Glacier evolves at level 36 into Solcava, the Soul Shell Pokemon. Upon evolution, Glacier gained the Ghost type along with its Fire type. As sand from the desert blew into Kamelt's Molten Shell and became Glass, the souls of the dead lost in the desert also fused with the shell. Upon evolution into Solcava, the yellow glass became clear, and you can now see the molten souls within its shell. If you couldn't tell, Solcava's shell is based on a lava lamp, except being a literal lava lamp, with the ectoplasm of souls being the ghostly bubbles within. The name Solcava comes from soul and lava, and uses the word Solcata, being the species name of the African spurred tortoise, to bring everything together though the shape of its body takes more inspiration from the giant Galapagos tortoise now instead. Since Blastoise and Torterra are pretty stocky, I wanted a longer neck tortoise for some contrast. Solcava has the abilities Blaze and Regenerator to use its bulk to the fullest. It isn't just bulky though, it has a pretty dang good special attack and a new move to utilize it. When Glacier evolves, your new Solcava will learn the signature move Ecto Lava from Ectoplasm and Lava. A ghost type special move with 120 base power and 85% accuracy. This move hits all opponents on the field and has a 30% chance to burn. It's essentially a huge wave of spiritual lava. If you find yourself lost in the desert, avoid the light of a Solcava. Your soul may be stolen for the rest of these Pokemon's 500 year lifespan. Its shiny takes on a purpley skin tone and the lava inside becomes a burning blue. This Pokemon was one of the most out of left field designs I came up with. Originally, I was gonna pull a Torterra and make a tortoise with a giant pyramid shell and have it be fire and ground type. But one day, I came up with the lava lamp shell idea and couldn't not do it. So, here you go. Finally for this video is the final evolution to Swabian, the simian to hang out with Chimchar and Grookey. With evolution, Swabian became Swainian, a strong member of its crew but a bit angry and gung-ho. At level 36 though, the angry Swainian becomes the free and courageous Wash Knuckler, the captain Pokemon, a water and fighting type. The name Wash Knuckler is fully in pun territory. It's basically Swashbuckler, but uses Wash for the water type and Knuckle for the fighting type. Wash Knuckler has the ability Torrent and a hidden ability Guts, as this is a very gutsy Pokemon. While tough, Wash Knuckler are also very smart. They build rafts and other primitive watercrafts to sail the seas. They are, of course, the captains of these ships, recruiting a few Swabian and two or three Swainian for its crew. Though Swainian seem to be brutes who pillage as the classic pirate does, Wash Knuckler are no longer like this. They simply seek the freedom of the seas and to do as they wish. It is said that when a Swainian receives the guidance of a Wash Knuckler captain, that is when they are finally able to evolve. As captain, Wash Knuckler learns a new signature move known as Captain's Orders. This is a physical fighting type move with 100% accuracy. The base power can range from 20 to 120. This move has Wash Knuckler and the rest of your party attack the opponent. It does 20 base power per party member. So with a full team of six, it will do 120 base power, as long as none of them are fainted. Its hair is meant to represent a pirate hat with the tails looking like crashing white caps on waves. Its fur also looks like classic seafaring adventurer garb and is said to have inspired the way pirates used to dress in their heyday. The shiny form takes on purple fur and slightly sunburnt skin. I know that this Pokemon is more human-like than people usually like, but it is a simian, not a rabbit or lizard, so I hope it works well enough for you. And that was the six missing starters' final evolutions. Now that you've seen all six, let me know which is your favorite in a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe for more Fakemon in the future. You can also check out my last Fakemon video, creating Pokemon based on Tears of the Kingdom, if you're a Zelda fan at all. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.